Boulder County Parks and Open Space is dedicated to preserving and restoring natural resources for the benefit of the environment, wildlife, and the public. The bottom line is that we're active stewards of this land. We maintain it or improve it, especially if it was degraded when we bought it. Buying open space is just the first step. This story is about what happens next. For nearly 40 years, Boulder County has been setting aside unique parcels of land and preserving them as open space. But it wasn't until 1993, when voters approved a sales tax to support open space, that county holdings really started to grow. Today, Boulder County manages about 100,000 acres of open space, land it either owns outright or manages as conservation easement property. From the rugged mountains to the grassy plains, open space requires management and restoration to maintain its balance with nature and its value as open space. About 25,000 acres of Boulder County open space is used for agriculture. It might be prime farmland, or it might be a degraded parcel that's been overgrazed and now is choked with weeds. Another 30,000 acres of Boulder County open space is forest land. Forested properties can be healthy or overgrown and stressed, an easy target for fire and disease. Streams and wetlands need maintenance and protection too, to control Russian olives and other weeds, to protect water quality, and provide habitat for birds and other wildlife. Open space managers put their skills and experience to the test to restore and maintain the balance of nature on these properties. Their success benefits everyone who lives here. When it comes to open space, our first objective is to preserve, and our second is to recreate and restore. Think of it in the same way you would think of your own home. If you bought a nice house on a nice piece of property, you'd work hard to keep it up so that it maintains its attractiveness and its usefulness. On the other hand, if you bought a property that was run down, you'd probably fix it up so that it would become more attractive and useful. At Boulder County Parks and Open Space, we restore historic buildings on our properties, such as the Batasso Homestead. Open Space Restoration applies that same concept to the land, so the land stays useful and attractive to us as open space. Open space that's in good shape improves air quality, it improves water quality, it decreases erosion, it provides wildlife habitat and just protects the aesthetics of this beautiful place we live in. And open space helps us maintain our own health and the balance in our daily lives. Native ecosystems have balance, but a lot of our land isn't a native ecosystem. We have non-native invasive weeds. Over the last century, much of the prairie was converted to agricultural land. We've suppressed fires in grasslands and in our forests. And many of the riparian areas along our streams have been channelized. Our challenge now is to use new land management techniques to mimic nature and restore the balance. Some restoration is simple. This used to be overgrazed grassland. The grasses were doing quite poorly, and as a matter of fact, the weeds were doing much better in some areas. Because of this, here at Parks and Open Space, what we decided to do was practice good weed management as well as proper grazing techniques. Because of these two things, we've managed to turn this area around, and the grasses are doing quite well. Some restoration is complex. This is a section of Left Hand Creek where we had a very successful riparian restoration project. When we purchased the property in 1996, the channel was in poor condition. Cattle had grazed all the riparian shrubs and trees to stubs, and noxious weeds infested the riparian area. There was no overstory except for a few old 
cottonwood, and willow trees. The stream banks were eroding without any riparian trees or willows to hold them in place. Also, there was an old bridge across the creek that was causing problems, and the stream diverted around it to compensate. We removed the bridge, and the stream channel ended up moving back to its original location on its own. To improve the riparian habitat, we excluded grazing and planted an overstory of shrubs and trees. We had two large volunteer projects in 2002 and 2003 where we planted cottonwoods, willows, box elder, and snowberry. We also used willows to protect eroded parts of the stream bank and planted wetland plants for additional bank stabilization. This riparian area is unique in that we have about seven species of native willows here, including the typical plains willows, as well as willows from foothill riparian areas. Some restoration takes place on a larger scale. In our low elevation ponderosa pine forest lands, we've suppressed natural processes such as fire and grazing for so long that it's had a serious impact on the health of these forests. Our understanding of a healthy density in ponderosa pine forests is that they were very open at about 30 large trees per acre. Currently, we see sites that are as dense as 3,500 trees per acre. In these dense stands, it is difficult for native understory plants to establish. In stands like this, it is very likely that even a surface fire would move up into the canopy and spread as a crown fire. These stands are also more susceptible to insect outbreaks. Disturbances such as surface fire at frequent intervals would help. That's what nature would do to keep things in balance here, but that's difficult to achieve with homes so close to open space forests. We can try to get a similar effect, however, by thinning stands of trees and sometimes using a prescribed fire to simulate the natural disturbance cycle. You get benefits similar to a natural fire, but it's a lot more controlled and it accomplishes two goals, restoration and reducing the fuel load in the forest. The wood we're left with is used for open space projects like fencing and restoring historical structures. And occasionally we'll have firewood sinks. The wood also gets used to heat the county's open space and transportation complex in Longmont. Last year, we saved more than $30,000 heating with wood trimmed from open space forest projects. We also rehabilitate and recede the project areas of impact to return it to its natural condition. After a forestry project is complete, we monitor and maintain the forest for healthy growth. The full benefit of a large forest health project can take years to see. On many Boulder County open space properties, wildlife habitat and ecosystem health need to be balanced with recreational open space use. Our goal when we build trails is to limit the amount of impact to natural resources and be sustainable in the long run or require the least amount of maintenance. In developing the trail plan for Mud Lake, we considered the natural resources and also the needs of the community that had been using this property for a long period of time. We ended up blending existing roads and trails with new trails to create a network that provided the best flow through the area while also protecting the higher value natural resources on the property. This area was a road that was heavily eroded. It provided a good corridor to Caribou Ranch, but it was in terrible condition. So we brought in soil, rocks, and plants to rehabilitate the area and leave a small trail. The slope was steeper than we would normally use to place a trail but it made more sense to use the existing disturbance. Some restoration projects are really reclamation projects. Gravel mining is one example of reclamation. In reclamation, the site is restored not to its original ecosystem, but to a new habitat that is different. It may be planted with native species or non-native species. Gravel mines are typically reclaimed to pond and wetland habitat. Regardless, most restoration projects require a lot of patience. A lot of the land that we're restoring to grassland was formerly cropland. This area was in dryland wheat production, 
where there's no irrigation water. It's pretty hilly, a lot of steep slopes, thin soils, and production potential is limited. It's also surrounded by development that makes it difficult to farm logistically. For those reasons, it makes a lot of sense to put it back to grassland. Restoring the land to the grassland provides protection for the soil from erosion, provides clean water to the watershed, provides habitat for wildlife, for vegetation, plant communities. It's aesthetically pleasing landscape and it provides recreational opportunities. We've started our own seed collection and production project where we collect seed from local native plants. We plant them on irrigated farmland and harvest it there. This gives us a large quantity of high quality seed from locally adapted plants that we can later use in our own restoration projects. Grassland restoration is a long-term commitment that requires a lot of patience. Under our normal rainfall it takes three to five years before it looks anything like what we want it to. And the drier it is, the longer it takes. In the first few years after we've planted the grassland species, the main management activity is weed control. The objective is to prevent competition from the weeds with our desirable species and to keep the weeds from going to seed. The primary activity is mowing and we also do some herbicide application. Once the grassland is established, management isn't over. Eventually, in order to maintain the ecological health, we'll have to introduce ecologic disturbance that helps maintain that health. Fire and grazing are two of the most important influences on grasslands. A lot of times we use a combination of different techniques to restore our open space properties. Some people will ask how do we know if our restoration has been successful? And that's an excellent question. We use a number of different methods to monitor and to measure the success of our projects and we're finding that our restoration efforts are really paying off nicely. One thing we can point to is the return of wildlife species. We're seeing osprey nests and heron rookeries. We have an increase in raptors and bats on our properties. By stabilizing stream banks and encouraging the natural regeneration of willows and cottonwoods in riparian areas, we see visible signs of success. These types of restoration are going to encourage fish and other riparian plants and animals to inhabit these areas. We also keep tabs on the decrease of weeds, which is an indicator of the health of the natural system. Abundance of grasses, wildflowers, and shrubs that we have not planted is another measure of restoration success. Preserving, restoring, and maintaining Boulder County open space is a complex, long-term project that works with the support of many people. It takes vision and leadership from committed citizens and committed taxpayers. It continues with a dedicated, skillful, and experienced staff, as well as volunteers. And it depends on financial support from the taxpayers, the Boulder County Open Space Foundation, and funding sources such as Great Outdoors Colorado. Our goal in restoration is to make the land self-sustaining. When we restore degraded open space, we put in the extra effort to make it healthy for the long term. After that, we make periodic checks to be sure that all is well, and then we just let the land itself take care of the rest. <laughs>